Probably one of the most common comments I've had is, when are you going to do the van tour? I must have had that comment probably about 200 times by now. And it ranges from when are you going to do the van tour to why have you got that van? How have you racked that van out? Um, all sorts, I've had so many questions about it. So thank you for your patience. Welcome to the van tour. Okay, so if you are coming into this industry and you're buying a van, you will need to secure it. That's the first thing you'll need to do because van crime is skyrocketing. It's getting worse and worse every day. Now, a lot of thieves, if they want something out the back of your van, they won't bother trying to break into the back of your van. They'll just nick the van because a lot of vans like this one have now got deadlocks on them. So if you press, the, if you press your key fob twice, it dead bolts the van. So if you, you can't open it from the outside, but also if you manage to get inside, you also can't open the doors from the inside either. It's fully deadlocked. So a lot of thieves, if they want something out of your van, they'll just take the whole van. Now the best way you can stop that from happening is get one of these. This one's a Stop Lock Pro Elite. Uh, this one costs 98, I think it was about 9,500 quid, somewhere around there. Well worth the investment. Um, it's one of the, don't buy a cheap one, all right? If you're gonna buy a steering lock, buy a good quality one because a cheap one you can actually remove them they've done tests on youtube and stuff and you can actually remove them without any tools whatsoever if you just use a bit of brute strength you can actually remove them without the use of any tools so when you buy one buy a good one all right although it's a very crude way of securing your vehicle it's still today one of the most effective ways of doing it um, and it's also a good visual deterrent as well if i'm working anywhere in central london or if i'm parked up in the street overnight <coughs> i'll always fit this uh, this actually brings me on to my next question. Uh, where I live, luckily I'm fortunate, uh, fortunate enough that I've got underground parking. I've had numerous comments, people asking, why is your roof hook facing downwards rather than upwards, traditionally the way you would normally see it? The reason for that is because if I put the roof hook the other way up, I can't fit into the car park at night. So that's the reason that I've, um, I've fitted it the other way up. It looks a bit strange, but it's because I can't, when I park the vehicle overnight and I've got to park in the car park, I had to turn the ladder rack the other way around. So that's the reason why. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm gonna get out and I'll show you around the outside of the van and um, yeah, we'll get going. We have a black Renault Traffic. Now I bought this one back in 2009. I bought this one brand new from the, whole, from the showroom. Now, when I bought it, it was just a stock van. It didn't actually have the side skirts or the alloy wheels. It didn't have any of the custom stuff on it. Now, one of the reasons I ended up putting the alloys and the, the side skirts on it and stuff, um, when I bought this van new, I bought this back in 2009. Now, obviously when it was new, it had four new wheels, four new tires, it had all those bits and pieces. But what happened was when it got to about 20,000 miles, I think it was, and I needed four new tires, it worked out that to put, I think it was to put four new tires on it was like 400 quid or 450, something like that. But then I was shopping around online and these were like 600. So to get four 18 inch rims with the van rated extra low tires, it was like 600 quid and it came with the bolts and everything you needed to do it. So it just made more sense to just put four new wheels and tires and I get a nice set of wheels with it as well. So that was the only reason I put those on. It wasn't a deliberate thing I wanted to customise it. It just, it made more financial sense to put those on than change four tires. So that was the main reason I did those. So once I'd fitted the wheels and tires, the next thing I decided to fit were these side skirts. Now there was no real particular reason to fit those. It was just, I quite liked them. Um, and then the ones at the very end, they went on as well. Uh, and then I just ended up having a full set of chrome on the van. So there was no particular reason for it. It was just, I quite liked them. And they're easy enough to fit, sort of an hour on your own, and you can fit them yourself. So they're pretty straightforward. And then the final thing I fitted was this stainless steel nudge bar on the front. Now that cost me, I think it was about 200 and... Two, I've, got, I've got 220 stuck in my head for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but I fitted that, and then with that, then I decided to fit the Angel Eye lights at the front. And they were a doddle to fit, actually. They were really straightforward. You can actually see some of the LEDs have dropped out on this, unfortunately. But they're actually quite straightforward to fit, and they look really nice at night time. I think they really give it a nice edge. These ones are a bit tired now, actually, these, um, these spots here. But they've got, they, again, they've got the blue rim 
angel eye lights in them but these are actually a bit tired and there's some rust forming on the inside of them so I'm not going to bother changing them because I'll be selling this van soon anyway. So up on the roof uh, for the roof rack and stuff this is just a standard roof rack nothing too special just a four bar rack um, and we've got the xenon strobes I've got one at the front and I've got one other side of the back I don't know if you can see it um, and they're just operated via a switch on the dashboard. Now one of the other things I wanted to do was when you're loading up at night or if you're working out in the road or something, especially if it's in the middle of winter, because it gets dark at like four o'clock. So one of the other things I wanted to do was to fit some roof lights, which I'll show you now. So for the floodlights on the roof of the van, I've got one here and then I've got another two on the back of the van, just background there as you can see. So the roof lights on the van are switched by these two rocker switches here, which go to a pair of relays underneath the van. So I can either choose between having the side loading light on or the rear loading bay lights on. Um, and it just gives you the flexibility when you're loading up, you can decide whether you want to have one set of lights on or all of them on. Um, and it just gives you that extra bit of, uh, it makes life a bit easier, especially if it's, you know, if it's the middle of winter and it's pouring down with rain, it just makes life a bit easier. You can load your tools up in a, you know, in the lights, which just makes it, it's one of those things that once you've had it, you wouldn't go back. So moving around the van towards the back now. So the ladder rack was the next thing I did. Now that is absolutely a godsend. It is the best bit of equipment I think I've got on the entire van. You can pick these up for about, I think if you look around online, you can probably pick them up for about a hundred quid. They're not expensive anymore. And it saves you all the hassle of having to get up onto the roof of the van to undo the, the tie hooks, take a ladder off, it just makes it much easier because you can pull it down from the roof of the van. So it's just, again, it's just simplicity when you're working. I wanted something that was really simple. You can get to everything nice and quickly. So a well worth investment. They're about 100 quid. I think if you look on eBay, you can probably find them about 100 quid. A lot of British gas vans and a lot of sky vans had them. And of course, after their vehicles were three years old, they sold off the vans and a lot of these went on eBay and stuff. So you can still pick them up. They're readily available and they're well, well worth the money. So if you want to pull the ladders off the van, you just pull that down and pull forwards. And that just literally, the whole thing then just lifts off the back of the van. So this is the bit everybody wants to see. I think the inside of the van. Now this rack here was all one piece and it came out of a sky van. Again, they are available on eBay. These are a little bit more few and far between. They're not quite as readily available, but if you hunt around, you will find one. What I wanted to do was utilize as much space upwards in the van as I could because what I find a lot of the time that people have with tradesmen's vans and stuff they'll utilize all the floor space but then the actual all this bit up here ends up being left and you don't utilize the full space of the van so that was why I got this rack here so I'll start with this so it's just a little locker I actually lost the key so I've got to put a new lock in it but um, yeah so in here is my uh, rooftop stuff uh, so I just keep my ropes my harness ropes um, and stuff like that. I keep it in here because I don't want it to get damaged. Um, if I just leave it in a bag in the back of the van, it will get cut with a Stanley knife or something, knowing my luck. So that was the reason I keep it all in here. I did notice that the Sky Vans, they've actually got 12 volt power ports here. Now I'm guessing they had specialist equipment that plugs in here because this foam padding was already in here. So I'm guessing they've got some sort of special device which was deliberately to be plugged in here. I don't know what it was, but I'm guessing they had some sort of specialist piece of equipment that went in here. I don't know, but so that's what I use that for. It's just to keep my ropes, harness and all that sort of stuff. If I'm doing work using my triple extension or if I'm on rooftops or stuff, that's where it all goes. At the moment, I'm using a very high tech bungee cord to hold the door shut. So under here, A rolling knee pad. If anyone's never used one of these, go and get one because again, these are fantastic. Just five wheels on the back, little magnetic tray, and it just saves your knees, especially if you're working outside on concrete. Absolutely brilliant. You can roll around quite comfortably with those all day long. Fantastic bit of kit. Uh, so storage for my ladder and just literally pull it straight out, straight back in again. Uh, in here I keep my SDS and my grinder. They stay in there because they're just bulky and awkward, so they stay in there out of the way. Uh, extension lead, funny enough, one of the things I actually seldom ever use is an extension lead, but it's there if I need it, so that just stays in there out of the way. 
this rack here. Now, the idea behind this rack was that, again, I wanted to utilize maximum space on the roof of the van. I actually sort of modified this rack a little bit because what I've ended up doing is I ended up putting little bolts on the feet of these racks. And the idea is, is they can slide straight out, but it means they won't fall out. You can pull them out nice and easily to get to what you want. Um, but you can also, you can keep them in there and it just means that it doesn't rattle around when you're driving either, which is quite nice. But this rack here just carries light bulbs. That's basically all this one carries, just all different types of light bulbs for every single sort of thing that I'd ever need. So one of the reasons I wanted to individually sort all the different types of light bulbs and stuff that I've got is because we've all been there. When we've been to, you know, when we've been to a customer's job or something and we, we're, you know, we always have that thing, you know you've got that light bulb on the van somewhere and you just can't figure out where it is. That was the exact reason I got this. Uh, other things, my work signs, I just keep those zip tied up there out the way neatly. Cable rack, small shovel, that stays in there out the way. Again, it's just got tool clips holding it in. All the stuff which comes out regularly can just go in and out and it can slide in nice and easily. So back to this side of the van, um, you've got these holders here for all of my silicons and stuff, silicons and sprays. You can buy these online. These are quite readily available actually. I think these are about 15, 20 quid a pop, somewhere around there. Again, another one, and then one's from a silicon down there. And then over there is one for my silicon guns and a spare set of ladders if I want it. And then up in the very top over there, I've got waterproof gel. I've got about five liters of that. I normally carry about five liters of that and I keep that up there out of the way just so it doesn't burst or get damaged. Uh, dispenser for gloves, little blue shoes you always see me wearing. So that's this side of the van basically finished. So I'll show you the back of the van. You can have a look at that. So gentlemen, this is it. So what I've done, I'll start on the doors actually. So again, I'm trying to utilize sort of maximum space here. So uh, sanitizer, hand cleaner, first aid kits, big wipes, two air radios, handy if you've got sort of hired in labor working with you, Stanley knife blades. I use some guttering for the um, your large SDS bits, 20 mil, 25, 16 mil. So I just use some short and long guttering just somewhere, again, it's just somewhere to keep them that's nice and easy to get to. Now, again, this rack here, again, all came out of a BT, I think came out of a BT, is a BT van, I think, or a Sky van, I can't remember. Um, but you've got the pull-out bins at the bottom. So they keep all of my plastic boxes. And then behind this one, there's another bin. And then there's a second bin, which keeps all my metal boxes. And they just slot back in nice and easily. And that's it. And then this bin here, I've just got my 10 mil T and E. But that one just keeps all my different types of cables, three core, two core, five core, all those bits and pieces. And then in that one back there, that just keeps my test meter bits and pieces like that. Now these racks here were brilliant. These are really, really worth the money. You can still buy these now. They're, if you buy them new, they're quite expensive, but I bought this one again. This came secondhand, I bought this separately. But these are fantastic. Um, and you just literally lift up the handle and your boxes come open like that. So they're well worth it. Because again, it just keeps things stored nice and neatly. So. One of the reasons that I really liked the layout in the back of this van particular was because of this workbench, because it gives you the ability, um, A, you can get your tools really quickly, you haven't got to fumble around in the back of your van, but also if you want to cut, if you want to cut things, anything like that, that you want a workbench, it gives you the ability that you can do that. Um, and it's also somewhere you can sit out the rain as well, or you just sit here and have your lunch. It's just quite nice rather than sitting in the front of the van cooped up. So having a workbench on the back of the van really was worth, that's worth money, it really is. So the back of the van here is where I keep the tools that I use the most. So my tool bag, my 12 volt Milwaukee gear, uh, my inspection camera, test meter, little impact driver, all the, all the bits which I use constantly, I keep on the back of the van because they're nice and easy to get to. So moving up into the van, I've just got my stickers, all sorts of electrical tapes, brown, blue, black, white, grinding discs, the chintzy work light, so it's got magnetic, so it just sticks onto the roof of the van. This rack here, um, again, I bought this one separately. I've just kind of sort of modified all of this to fit. This one keeps all the little bits and pieces which I use for telephones, satellites. Um, so it keeps nuts, all my nuts, bolts, earth clamp, bolts, and all that sort of stuff. 
So television connectors. In fact, you saw this. This is the one you saw the other day, actually. Uh, all different types of, all different types of crimps and stuff. Uh, sharpie pens can never have too many sharpie pens. Uh, and then your big meaty crimps, earth, earth clamps, crimp gun. Rechargeable LED lights. Um, now I've modified those a little bit. They've got magnetic plates on the base of the feet. Uh, another rack for multi-surface cleaner, glass cleaner, solvent cleaner. Now what have we got? So uh, a whole array of dimmer switches, cooker switches. And then this one here was my teal wash. This is one of those products that once you've, again, once you've had one, you would not go back. It is a fantastic bit of kit. Now, the main reason I had this fitted, the main reason that I did this was because um, um, customers don't appreciate you washing your grubby hands in their beautiful white Belfast sinks. So for that reason, that was why I got this. So this here is powered by uh, a 10 mil flex, which is this one here. And it just connects underneath the unit here. And I've just run it underneath the van and it goes right the way back to the dashboard of the van where I've just got an isolator switch for it. These have got voltage sensing equipment in them. So when you start the van up, it detects that the alternator is putting out a current and it switches on. So the idea is you never got to switch it on or off. You'll permanently have hot water if you want it. And it's really easy. It just literally lifts down like this and you've just got hot water on tap. So again, one of those items, once you've had one, you wouldn't be without it. And then once you've finished, the water disappears into the drain hopper there. And I've just put in this pipe here, which then disappears down underneath the van. And then to fill it up, you just put the water in there. Uh, it'll take up to six litres, I think this one will. And it's pretty quick. It takes from, from the moment you start the van, so when it's cold, it takes about, to get up to 50 degrees, I think takes about 10 minutes. It's pretty quick. It doesn't take long at all. Now it does draw 20 amps when it's running. So it is worth mentioning that if you've got a little van with a little battery, you might want to be careful about having one because it does draw 20 amps. It switches off automatically once the water is hot and it just works on a thermostat to keep the water hot all the time. The only downside to having a van like this is that you can't, um, if you want to store something big in the van, you can't. So that is one downside to this, which you just find that you kind of have to take on the chin and accept it. You know, you can't store any large materials. If I want long lens of pipe, they'll go in the roof rack, in the roof tube up there. But if that's, you know, if that's the only compromise I've got, then I'm happy with it. But that basically is it. Um, I'm not sure if anything else, I'm sure I might have missed a few bits out, but if I have, I'm sure you'll let me know. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the comments box below. Uh, otherwise, if you want to subscribe to this channel, you want to be clicking in this corner. If you want to watch another video, maybe down here. Uh, and otherwise, I'll see you on another midweek video. See you later, guys. Bye.